Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the Weather Extreme video for Tuesday, the 17th of January. James Spann here. Maybe a little active weather around here later today. So let's get in there and discuss things. We'll start with some of the Skycam shots around the Alpha Skycam network early this morning at the insane hour of 5 a.m. That's the Tuscaloosa Skycam looking down on Lurleen B. Wallace Boulevard from atop the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. Some light rain is falling there. It is raining early this morning in Haleyville, up in Winston County in northwest Alabama. And there's a look at Jasper. We've seen some fairly impressive lightning strikes from that uh, sky cam this morning. Nothing severe. Uh, the air is stable right now, but that will probably change later today. All right. Uh, on the water vapor satellite imagery, pretty strong uh, sh uh, trough coming through the middle of the nation. That will be enhancing the dynamic lift later today. And at the surface, an Arctic front. Is passing through St. Louis and Wichita this morning. And it's pretty cold air coming in behind that. Uh, in fact, up on the Canadian border, it looks like temperatures are down to about 15 below zero in northern Montana. And look at the sharp gradient over the heartland. Uh, Missouri, I mean, you got uh, readings in southeast Missouri in the 60s, and you go up in the northwestern tip of the state, and they're up to 20 there, or down to 20. So, uh, that cold air will kind of clip Alabama tomorrow. Much colder tomorrow, but it will be a quick-hitting cold snap like the ones we've seen all season. Uh, that's our radar at 450 this morning. Uh, good rain's falling from near Gordo up to Huntsville, right on top of Smith Lake. And look at that. That's the radar coming out of uh, St. Louis at uh, about the same time. And uh, the red uh, uh, box there, that's a tornado watch. And a pretty nasty squall line passing right through downtown St. Louis at that point during the pre-dawn hours on the Arctic front. That's the uh, leading edge of the very cold air. A lot of lightning and had some tornado warnings in southern Missouri late last night. How about them apples? All right, uh, look at that extreme cold watch for uh, North Dakota and northwest Minnesota. Don't see those that often. Winter storm watches and warnings for the northwest and some winter weather advisories around the Great Lakes and up in the northeast. And, of course, this is the graphic we'll be watching today, the day one convective outlook. We've got the standard slight risk of severe weather for a pretty good chunk of north and central Alabama back into eastern Mississippi from near Gadsden and Lake Gunnersville down to about Jackson. That does include uh, most of our viewing area except for the far eastern counties. This is the tornado probabilities for today, just 2%. And the wind, uh, damaging wind probabilities at 15%. It's a classic, you know, cold weather situation where the cape is low and the shear is high. But as, how many times have you heard me say here, those can be a booger, those can be a pest and produce an issue that you might not expect. Here's a QPF chart. Uh, this is the rain valid through Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. And this is showing rain amounts peaking at almost 2 inches up on the uh, Tennessee border. With the amounts down this way, one to two inches. And that, of course, takes into account the rain today and the rain that we get uh, Friday, night and, Friday night and Saturday as we kick off the weekend. All right, model fans, let's take a look. This is the 06Z GFS valid at noon today at 500 millibars, about 18 to 20,000 feet off the ground. You can see a very uh, fast flow coming through here. And uh, down below that, the surface low is pretty far north. It's up around Detroit. Very cold air behind that front. We've got showers and storms that should be coming in here. Let's get down to the high-resolution RPM. This is the 4-kilometer RPM. And this is valid at 6 o'clock this evening. And, ooh, that looks uh, kind of stormy through here. With active convection, 9 o'clock this evening. Strong to severe storms passing south of here. Uh, that's down to Roanoke, down to about Verbena and uh, north of Montgomery. So by then, things should be winding down. Looks like the main window for severe weather I'd say maybe 2 until 8 o'clock. You want to pick out a core time frame there. And then at midnight, everything's kind of winding down. And the showers uh, from Birmingham North should be pretty much over at that point. Look at the snow up there in uh, Tennessee. Snow showers and snow flurries. No, nothing like that down here. This is the instability, the cape, the surface-based cape coming off the high-resolution RPM at 6 o'clock local time this evening. And, you know, the amounts are... 500 to 800 joules, which is sufficient for severe weather, but it's not what you'd expect to see in the classic, you know, spring outbreaks where those things can soar to over three, 4,000 joules. This is the uh, cape off the uh, 
H triple R. Very similar. It's got uh, the amounts there, about 500 joules or so. That's uh, this evening at, uh, let's see, 22Z. This is 4 o'clock local time this afternoon. But look at the shear off that same model. Those numbers are way up there, uh, and that means a good chance of sustained updrafts. And if by chance we can get a severe storm going, you know, there could be an isolated tornado. I'm, and again, in a setup like this last week, remember the North Carolina deal had an EF2? And I'm not saying we'll have one of those today, but... You have to watch the radar carefully, so an isolated tornado can't be ruled out. In fact, look at the uh, STP. Wow. That's the significant tornado parameter uh, valid this evening at 6 o'clock. And anything over a 1 is significant where you see the shades of yellow. And uh, by golly, the uh, STP is peaking at uh, over 2 around Tuscaloosa. So I'm just saying uh, if we can get a few discrete storms and we don't get them lined up, there might be a tornado warning or two later today. It's not like the classic spring setups, but again, it's something that we'll have to keep an eye on. All right, tomorrow, a troughing over the east, but it's not a high amplitude trough. So the core of that really nasty cold air stays north of us. Uh, highs will drop into the 40s tomorrow. Both models have us uh, between 46 and 49, and the sky becomes sunny. Thursday, we'll start the day in the 20s, probably mid to upper 20s. So you'll be scraping frost off the windshield, but uh, as the day warms up, we'll be in the upper 50s, a nice warm-up, one of those 30-degree warm-up days. And then Friday, uh, clouds increase as uh, we begin to see moisture coming in. And there could be a shower Friday night, and now the GFS is in good agreement with the European. You know, it always catches up. And it's got uh, a good batch of showers in here. Maybe some thunder on Saturday. The deep surface low is northeast of here. And uh, that would keep highs in the low 60s with the clouds and showers. So it looks like kind of a wet day to start the weekend. And Sunday, the moisture stays pooled here. Uh, should be a pretty mild day. Thickness values are not as high on this run. This is suggesting highs in the mid to upper 60s. But if the sun breaks, we could touch 70. So kind of cloudy-ish, maybe a little light rain in spots. And the same thing Monday. We've got that low-level moisture pooled up, and I think Monday we could easily see 70. Cloudy, very warm, maybe a shower or two. And now this is what everybody's buzzing about, all the you know, the, the storm chaser guys. Uh, this is Tuesday of next week on the, the GFS. It's got a very strong negative tilt shortwave trough north of here. And down below that, uh, potential for severe convection. 996 millibar low over Wisconsin. Uh, pretty nasty setup for uh, strong to severe storms on Tuesday of next week. So, yes, there's no doubt we need to pay attention to this. But this is a week out. It's not technically in the land of voodoo, but it's almost there. But let me caution you here before you get on your high horse. Look at the European Tuesday morning of next week. It has nothing. It's got the big system out there in the Texas panhandle with heavy snow in Colorado and New Mexico, and, and the storms are in West Texas. Hey, what's the difference in, you know, 800 miles? And you know what I'm going to say if you watch these videos. This model has had a much better history of performance this season than the GFS. So I'm just saying, yes, we do need to watch developments, but uh, I would lean toward the European, which is a much slower and different solution. And then back to the GFS Wednesday of next week, it's got the uh, showers and storms on to the east, but the Euro on Wednesday of next week still has the storms way west of here. So, uh, I don't know. Confidence obviously is low in that deal next week. All right, let's go out there a little uh, deeper here. This is the 29th. That's a nice trough. Looks kind of wet with some cold air coming in behind it. Quick pop. And then on the uh, 1st of February. Wow. Wow. Time's flying. Another trough to the west, but that looks just kind of benign. I mean, nothing really extremely cold. And again, this is a GFS look at the uh, NAO down at the bottom. And you see it just doesn't want to go negative. You can get cold shots, absolutely, but they just don't last long until you begin to see that thing spike down, and there's just no evidence of that. Until that changes, our weather will be very changeable with only short cold snaps around here. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog the next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren 
You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.